Hey, it's Chris. Some exciting new stuff just dropped for Final Cut Pro users, whether you're on the iPad, the Mac, or if you're using Final Cut Camera, which I use constantly. I'm using it right now. In fact, I want to start with Final Cut Camera because it's free. And the big cool new thing here for me is that it shoots 120 frames per second now if you have the latest supported iPhone 16 model. You guys know I basically made a whole course called Pro iPhone Video Essentials on this app and how to make the most of it. And this is one thing that was really missing, actually, was being able to shoot 120 frames per second with the new iPhones. Why does this matter? I mean, it's for more cinematic, slow-mo shots, obviously, but the way I like to use it is I like to just grab the iPhone with no other gear and shoot some handheld shots. And then because I can get such nice, creamy, smooth slow-mo, then I don't have to worry about stabilization or stuff like that. I can just get the shot, slow it down, put in some optical flow or some frame blending. Now with the AI uh, slow-mo and frame blending, and I don't have to really like overthink getting a really nice, beautiful shot. The downside is it takes up a whole lot of space, especially if you're shooting 4K, log, uh, ProRes, right? All the things that I love to do because I wanna go in and color grade it. And if you actually get the course, it's not meant to be uh, an ad for the course, but I have like my iPhone LUTs, which are the lookup tables, which is what I use to color grade my footage really simply and easily. And you can too, you just drop it on. I show you how to do that in the course. Uh, then it's gonna be amazing. And this is just such an upgrade to be able to bring that. It, it makes sense and it just had to be a matter of time because this is such a useful requested feature. You know, when Apple shipped this, there was so much alike, but another new thing here is the level. A lot of apps have a level built in. It's sort of a must have thing and it was kind of missing. So I'm really glad that that's here now as well. Hey, just really quickly, if you haven't checked out the Daily Tech Newsletter, you gotta get over there. It's free, it comes out on Fridays. It'll catch you up super quickly on everything going on in the Apple world, tech world, AI stuff. It's gonna help you be successful. There's like a free music playlist you can check out, all kinds of cool stuff, and also some free wallpaper. It's linked up down below. Also, something that's interesting is this. It's the HEVC and being able to shoot HEVC with log. So obviously shooting in ProRes takes up an enormous amount of space. When I shoot with four iPhones, you know, on a multi-cam setup, they're all shooting to an external drive um, just so that I have space basically to shoot these enormous, gorgeous, but enormous files. So a lot of people were requesting HEVC support. Um, that's here now. And you can shoot in log with that. So that's a big deal. Also, if you know anything about shooting in log, you know, it looks a little bit weird uh, when you're just shooting, but Apple's gonna be able to bring not just the HEVC um, in log, but also a preview so that you can kind of see what the Apple LUT and, and the conversion and stuff is gonna look like in camera while you're shooting, not just later when you're editing. Why does that matter? Again, all this gets broken down in the course, but this lets you get an uh, accurate read um, and understand how things are being captured so you can bring your vision to life accurately. So you can actually see like, that's what it would normally look like. And then you can see, this is what it would look like with that preview enabled. You just see all the colors start to pop and everything. If you're an iPad user and you're really excited about being able to edit pro level video on your iPad, not having to be tethered to a Mac, then there's some cool new updates for you as well. You know, if you've ever used this, then you know that this is for touch first editing, but it's also great with the Apple Pencil. Now, if you have a Pencil Pro, you're gonna get some extra cool features here, including haptics. So the haptics was a missing part, uh, a missing piece of the puzzle if you were editing footage on your iPad. So now you have this nice magnetic timeline and as you scrub through footage, when you trim clips, when you move clips, you're gonna get some actual tactile feedback now, specifically when you're using the Apple Pencil. I keep saying this, and most recently I was talking about it in the context of the iPad mini review, but the haptics are one of the best things about the pro Apple Pencil. Yeah, like barrel roll and all this other stuff is cool, you know, if you're an artist or different ways, but the haptics just really bring the Apple Pencil experience to life in a whole new way that, once you experience it, you really miss it if you don't have it anymore. One of the things I'm most excited for are the new inks. So I don't know, one of the coolest things about using the iPad and Final Cut on the iPad is just being able to animate stuff in a really unique and authentic looking way. It's not just like plug in that you plugged in and some text and stuff animates. Like you can animate yourself very easily, very quickly using the Apple Pencil. Now the Apple Pencil Pro, now with haptics. And it's kind of just hard to tell from a picture, but it looks so cool. And it's fun to do actually, really fun. So not only are there some new inks, including the crayon, including watercolor, 
but you can also adjust how the picture is looking as well. So there's dynamic viewer resizing, that's nice. Just in general, new ways to work with and personalize the workspace are just always going to be appreciated by users. On the iPad version too, you get this new picture in picture view, which is really cool. Um, so, you know, if you've never messed around with it, it's definitely worth looking into all the effects that come with it. And there's also some new call out effects if you want to highlight stuff uh, in your video. So overall, some nice, subtle, but very useful and cool updates to the Final Cut Pro for iPad product, which I like because it's the most accessible way to get into Final Cut Pro. It's true that it's not as full featured as the Mac version, um, but there it has its own benefits. It's like its own lifestyle using the Final Cut version for the iPad versus the Mac. On the Mac, you're gonna have things like plugins and and just some more power under the hood that a lot of people don't need, honestly, but some people can't live without. That said, Final Cut for the Mac did get some cool new upgrades today as well. The thing I'm probably most excited about is what you see going on right here with this car, this magnetic masking. So you can actually pull out different objects and separate them from the background and it will stay masked even as the motion plays out. And it's not limited to just one mask at a time. You can actually mask several different things uh, that are on a shot at the same time. So this is actually really powerful, really cool. In the past, this was like pretty hard to do. And a lot of this stuff that Apple brings, like you had to have um, some other sort of either an editor dedicated and going through stuff or a plugin or something. This is really cost effective and time saving all wrapped into one. So Apple's doing a lot with machine learning and Apple intelligence. And you see that manifest sometimes not with the flashy um, Apple intelligence as a feature somewhere. Just It just bakes into new features that make the stuff that you already own that much more valuable. If you want to be way ahead of the curve, you're now able to edit spatial video in powerful new ways over on Final Cut for the Mac. So you're going to be able to do things like adjust the depth position, not just of your footage, but also things like titles. And you can actually preview the footage on the Mac virtual display. So the devices are working ever more in sync. One pretty big deal here is that it's going to automatically be able to caption your footage now. So it'll transcribe stuff. And if you're going to export to social and you don't want to have to ping this out, your footage to another third party that might cost you some money. Again, here's an extra thing that you can do in Final Cut Pro on the Mac to, I guess, save you not just money, but also some time. This is definitely a plus. I'm very happy about it. I just wish that I could also edit my footage using the transcribed audio, kind of like I can do in Gling right now. And I've personally provided some of this feedback to Apple, so we'll see what happens in the future. It seems like a pretty small step to get to that once you're doing this. So we'll see. But a lot of people will also export to something like CapCut or something like Descript. And so I feel like a lot of people are going to be able to get more done in Final Cut Pro itself without having to splice things up. So definitely some exciting updates. I'm most excited, I think, about this 120 frames per second being available to me now in the app that I've been using and relying on. It's true, you could use like Blackmagic's app and it does a lot. And in some ways it does more than Apple's free app. But the thing is, the way that Apple's app integrates with my iPad lets me preview the angles of four different iPhones and do all the settings remotely and stuff film, sync them all to the iPad, and then be able to powerfully edit that either on the iPad if I want to. It really makes your life so much easier because it auto syncs everything. Or drop it off over to the Mac if I need a little extra firepower in the hood, which is usually what I do. Um, I don't know, it just continually improves, I think. Uh, I get more and more value out of my Apple devices constantly all the time because of little updates like this. This isn't a huge major thing. You know, obviously there's no event around this. Uh, it's just dropping out into the website and you're discovering it today. Uh, but this is what I love about my Apple gear. The iPhone hasn't changed its shape in a really long time, but I'm using it in very professional ways to earn a living and it just keeps improving. Like this is nothing to sneeze at, really cool stuff. If you're using Final Cut Pro at all, let me know what your favorite update is, either for Final Cut Camera, Final Cut for the iPad, or Final Cut for the Mac, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.